we would like to acknowledge the land on which we gather is the occupied territory of the Iowa, Sakan Meskwaki, Wapaton, and Sioux people. Here is a brief introduction to our scanning protocols. Silverfast is our preferred program for scanning because we have found it gives us the most control over each scan as compared to other popular software. To start, create a folder on your desktop. You'll be saving all your photos on the desktop computer and then transferring them to a more permanent place later, like a folder in Google Drive. Next, turn on the scanner. This is an essential step because the scanner must be on for Silverfast to recognize it. Open the Silverfast application and click on the rainbow eye on the desktop. Log in to Silverfast, then start Silverfast. Click the blue start button in the lower right side of the menu. Before you start scanning, a few words. First, take care. Please use caution when handling your photographs, negatives, or slides. Your hands should be clean. Gently hold the photograph or slide by supporting the back of the photo with your palm and your fingers on the edges of the photo away from the image. Don't allow any food near the photographs or scanning area. Next, make sure the glass is clean by wiping the surface as necessary using a disinfectant cleaner and a soft cotton cloth. Place your first photograph face down, vertically oriented. For example, if it's a portrait, the top of the head should be oriented towards the top of the scanner. This is important so we can reduce the amount of image rotation later on in the process. After your photos are face down on the glass surface of the scanner, close the lid so that the photo is flattened against the transparent surface. Make sure that the white cushiony insert is installed. This is removed when you scan slides. Next, pre-scan the photo by turning to the right side of the Silverfast scanning interface and find the pre-scan button at the top. Click once to pre-scan your document and you will see it appear on the right side of the interface. Next, frame the photo so that you are snug against the photographic image. You will use the red frame that automatically appears, which is used to determine exactly what is scanned. Do not include the borders even though they may look fancy and you may like them, the Fordabon Iowa aesthetic is no borders. And it's okay if you cut a little bit into the pictures. It's better to have a clean image with no extra background included. Dealing with the red frame in Silverfast can take a bit of practice. To move the frame, place the cursor in the middle of the frame. Your cursor will change into a hand, allowing you to move the frame. To change the size of a frame, Hover over a part of the frame without the knob and your cursor will change into a double arrow. Then you will be able to change the size and dimensions of the frame. To rotate the frame, hover your mouse over one of the red knobs. Your cursor will change into a fist. This is the rotate tool. Use the zoom tool to get as snug as possible. For more frame options, delete frame, add a frame, etc you can select from the frame icon on the upper left of the interface. Here's the process for scanning print photos. First, for image format, determine if your image is a reflective, a transparency, or a wide transparency image. If it's a photographic print, it will be reflective. This is the default. If it is a 35 millimeter slide or a wide transparency negative, you will choose transparency holder. If it's a glass slide negative, you will choose transparency colon glass. For image type, determine if the image is a positive or a negative. If it's a photographic print, it will be positive. This is the default. If it's a 35 millimeter slide, it's usually a positive transparency. If it's a negative transparency, it's a negative. For color settings, choose 48 to 24 bit color. This is the default. Even though a print photograph may be black and white, we like to preserve the various colors and sepia tones of our black and white photos. For file name, we have developed a naming protocol for Fortifon Iowa images. A number, the first and last name of the digitizer, and the photograph's date. If you are batch scanning, it will be easier and better to apply the file names after you scan the image. 
For scanning format, choose JPEG. Your institution may prefer to scan TIFFs as well as JPEGs, but for now, Fortifun Iowa is a JPEG-only format since it's the most accessible image format for people to use. For PATH, click on the folder icon to locate the desktop folder where your scans will go. If you haven't done this already, create a folder on your desktop. When you're done scanning, you'll transfer your digitized images to a permanent folder for safekeeping. For format, set your format to custom. For preset, set your photo to 1300 ppi. This is the Fortifun Iowa standard for high resolution digital images for printed photographs. Next, select the output parameters. The output will likely default to inch. Choose pixel. Note the width and height. The longest side, either the width or the height, needs to be 10,000 pixels. The other side will automatically adjust, so you don't need to touch it. Aim your image to be around 7,000 by 10,000 pixels, with the long end being 10,000 pixels. If the image is square, it's best to scan 8,000 by 8,000 pixels. Do not exceed 10,000 pixels for the longest side. The goal is to scan each image so that it has an aspect ratio of approximately 70,000 pixels or less. Check all your settings to make sure nothing else gets knocked off. You will need to pay attention to output constantly from photo to photo. You don't want your photo to be too big, over 10,000 pixels, and you don't want your photo to be too small, like under 6,000 pixels. So. We kind of have a sweet spot with 1300 ppi and 10,000 pixels for the longest side. At this point, you are ready to scan that single photo. You can fill out the documentation table while you wait for the scanner to finish. A link to our standard documentation table template is in the description box for this video. Finally, check your digital images after you scan them. Open them up in the desktop folder to be double sure that everything has scanned correctly. For batch scanning and scanning wide transparencies, follow the instructions in our digital handbook.